yes. Just being here, I can feel it. If it was female companionship you wanted, Kelly Lundy's was the best money could buy. Why shouldn't I get paid for sex? At $600 an hour. First thing you would do is come into the bathroom. Right over here would be the envelope and thumb through the hundreds. Kelly had this power to attract men. But the bombshell, Kelly really was Susie. Susie Favor Hamilton, a famous middle distance runner and TV pitch woman running a secret double life. Were you worried someone was going to recognize you and figure out that you were Susie Favor Hamilton? They did. I knew my life was probably over. Susie Favor Hamilton. Susie Favor Hamilton. Susie Favor Hamilton was working as a high-priced Las Vegas escort. From the all-American girl to the whore overnight. Tonight, a golden girl pushed to the edge three times at the Olympics. Susie gets out in front. Postpartum depression. A marriage on the rocks. Mark, I don't know how anybody can understand how you were okay with this, why you didn't get up and say, you're crazy. So what turned an Olympic-class athlete into a Vegas call girl? I know it wasn't Susie, it was the disease. And now, the race of her life to get back on track. So many secrets, Susie. My life was filled with secrets. And tonight, she's sharing them all. Fast Girl. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Vargas. And I'm David Mueller. With the Summer Olympics in full swing right now, someone who knows what those athletes are going through firsthand, Susie Favor Hamilton, who competed in three separate games but took up a very different career after that. And she has laid it all out of the table right to you, Elizabeth. She absolutely has, David. Nothing was off limits. The woman who had once been on top, in contention for the gold, hit rock bottom and began living a secret double life, one that exploded in headlines and almost destroyed her life. Her book about it, Fast Girl, became a New York Times bestseller. But the question now is, can she finally stop running? When I was a little girl, I would pretend I was a horse. I just felt, you know, like a horse galloping through the woods. Susie Favor Hamilton has been running for most of her life. Running took me away from everything. The question has always been to where and from what? Stevens Point, Wisconsin, in the early 1970s, blessed with prodigious talent and laser-focused drive, young Susie emerges as a local sports hero. Colleges around the country flock to recruit her. She was recruited by 200 colleges to That's come crazy. run. That's crazy. I mean, everyone wanted her. Everyone wanted Susie. She was that good. Susie chooses to stay close to home, signing with the University of Wisconsin, Madison. I chose Wisconsin because I feel they have a great coach. The freshman from Wisconsin pouring it on down the home stretch. At Wisconsin, her collegiate career is nothing short of meteoric. What a this race, her freshman year, made everyone take notice. Watch as she hurdles headfirst across the finish line for the win. She was fantastic. She won everything in college. She's a Midwestern girl from Wisconsin. The perky little young lady, Susie Favor, takes over and dominates the women's race. She was it. With her parents' proud support. She is determined, a very determined person. The victories and the trophies keep piling up. So what were you known for as a, as a runner? I was, I was known for my kick. If there was another runner next to me with 100 meters to go, I could always outkick them. I could always out sprint them. So you're born with that talent. Either you have it or you don't. Off the turn, it'll be a sprint. Favor takes the lead. Huber cannot respond. Susie Favor will win the Battle of America's Best Collegiate Mile. How did you feel watching her? Proud? Yeah, absolutely. Just yeah. very proud. It was, it was pretty cool. Mark Hamilton, who plays baseball at Wisconsin, begins dating Susie their freshman year. And as an athlete yourself, yeah. in awe of her? A little bit. A little bit. She just never lost. Favor wins it. Jones takes second. You did perfect, sweetheart. You did perfect. Just perfect, honey. But all that perfection had come with a staggering price, a crushing anxiety to win. The community 
My hometown was all watching me. They were all expecting me to win. And that was nothing compared to the pressure Susie was feeling at home. But when I'm racing, I'm really focused. I mean, I want to win. This ABC News feature from 1990 paints a glowing picture of Susie and her family. An old Saturday evening post cover come to life. But these images don't reveal the hidden pain afflicting the family. Susie's brother Dan suffered from bipolar disorder. His behavior was often erratic and frightening. How did that affect the family? It was very difficult. I didn't understand his behavior. For years, Susie believed her success on the track was the one thing that alleviated her parents' suffering. Victory was the only option because if I won for my family, everybody would be happy and we would be perfect. And it would take the pain away from what is happening with my brother. What was your drive? Define it, explain it. My drive was an obsession. So that obsession was to train every day as hard as I could. And it kept building into bad behaviors. I developed an eating disorder because if I was thinner and lighter, I perceived that I would run faster. You just paint this picture of such anxiety, right. secret anxiety and insecurity. Right. D d oh my gosh, beyond insecure. You're not happy with your body. Those body image issues mushroom when Susie learns that someone on the athletic staff videotaped her breasts as she ran. It was devastating. It was another reminder, your body isn't good enough. You didn't look like other runners. You were more voluptuous. I didn't look like the ideal runner, so I had to look that part. Later, that insecurity would compel Susie to have breast reduction surgery. I mean, to go to all these extremes, to be that one person, my whole life was just to be a runner. Fortunately, Mark is there, now not only as a boyfriend, but as a much needed voice of reason. Mark was also the first person to really get you to look seriously at your bulimia. Yes, he basically told me, he said, I don't wanna be with you if you're not gonna eat healthy and be healthy. With Mark's help, Susie overcomes her eating disorders and her college career becomes one for the ages. I won nine NCAA titles. Nobody had ever done that. Nobody had ever done that. You were the most decorated runner mm -hmm. in history, in college history. It is a time of hope and optimism. Mark and Susie get married the week after graduation. And her coach is convinced that Olympic glory is in her near future. If she does make the Olympic team, she will be a force to be reckoned with. Susie Hamilton, U.S. middle distance runner. As the Olympics approach, Susie is fast becoming a darling of Madison Avenue as well as Madison, Wisconsin. For corporate America, the glamorous bubbly blonde is already solid gold. Endorsements from shampoo and shoe companies come quickly. Pump up and air out. So that was putting this extra pressure on. To do what though? To make the next Olympic team and to win a gold medal because that's what the companies were banking on. That's what they were paying me, the sponsorships. They thought I could get the Olympic gold. It is our honor to present the athletes of the one. In 1992, Susie walks into a packed stadium in Barcelona, right alongside dream teamer Magic Johnson. Her moment has arrived. But Susie is not there to meet it. You didn't get any sleep at all before your first Olympic run. First Olympics, no sleep, um, to a point of enormous anxiety, just building. Tough to get yourself in a right frame of mind yes. to go out there and run the race of your life. Right. Not going to happen. And it didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't happen. In Barcelona, she didn't even make the finals. But in 1996, there she was in Atlanta for her second go at the gold. You try and say, okay, this time, don't, don't attach so much to this. Yeah. Don't carry the world on your shoulders. Yeah, and, and that kind of, it was in Atlanta. And she wound up just running the 800 meters, which wasn't her best event. Once again, she doesn't medal. But despite her failure, Susie continues to rack up the magazine covers and to earn like a champion. And then I started to hear from my critics, other runners, that she's getting paid too much and she's not even running these fast times. But the 2000 Olympics offer one more chance to prove her doubters wrong. And soon, with Mark supporting her all the way, Susie is back on top, capturing titles in the U.S. and abroad. Then, in 1999, tragedy strikes. After years struggling with bipolar disorder, Susie's brother Dan commits suicide. Susie was devastated, of course, 
but you could tell right away she wanted to do something for the family, make everybody happy. How was she going to rescue things? That's the way she looked at it. She was devastated, but her focus changed quite quickly. Determined to win in his honor, Susie heads to the Sydney Games, hoping to capture, finally, that elusive Olympic gold. But the pressure that this woman had on her shoulders, in large part because she was seen as the next great one. And at the starting line, I felt the whole entire world was watching me. The whole world was watching, and what it was about to witness would change Susie's life. Forever. Susie Favor Hamilton in some distress. Susie Favor Hamilton trying to hang on. It doesn't look good. Stay with us. Susie Favor Hamilton of the United States. It's Susie Favor Hamilton's last ditch attempt at greatness. She's at the starting line at the women's 1500 in the Sydney Olympics. Sports writer Christine Brennan was there. So now 2000, she's mature, she's been around before, she knows the drill at the Olympic Games, and she is the favorite. At the starting line, I felt the whole entire world was watching me. Everybody in the world. I had just lost my brother the year before to suicide and I was feeling enormous pressure to win again for my family to take that pain away and I had just put favor back in my name to honor my brother. Pre-race jitters quickly turned to self-doubt. What is it like to walk out and see that a crowd that big, a stadium that big? It's 120,000 people. They're screaming, they're yelling. You've never heard sound like this ever before. All this pressure, this pressure is yours. You own the moment. Or you don't. When I got to the starting line, I just wanted to vanish. Can this nightmare be over? This is the worst thing in the entire world. And Susie, you're an idiot for not speaking up. I couldn't tell anybody. You couldn't tell them what? I couldn't tell them I don't want to be in this race. The starting gun goes off. Yeah. How does she look? She's up front. The gun went off, I took off. So it's Favor Hamilton in front. Which is Dillon not the thing you want to do in an Olympic final. You want to hang back, let somebody else do the work. I thought she had it. I thought that Susie Favor Hamilton was finally going to win her Olympic gold medal. I'm leading the race, which I can't believe, and in total panic, total anxiety panic attack with 200 meters to go. It's like running with cement blocks on your legs. I think you start seeing her form disappear with about 250 to go and uh, with 200 to go you can see you know you just know what's coming. Mara Bonita goes by Susie Faber Hamilton. Poyetska also moves up. And one after another after another are passing her and you can just tell it's over. She's not going to be first. She's not going to be second. She's not going to be third. And that dream of having an Olympic medal was gone and instead of finishing the race like most runners would I told myself, just fall. Into the home straightaway, and Susie Faber Hamilton has fallen down. Under the pitiless gaze of the television cameras, Susie Faber Hamilton collapses, tumbling onto the red turf. I was just worried about her. Mm -hmm. Did you think she'd been hurt? I just thought she was in pain. She faints as her fellow runners try to help. It is a performance worthy not of Olympic gold, but of Oscar gold. It was all an act. I pretended I was injured, and I remember thinking, again, you're the worst person in the world. Look at what you just did. You blew it. You're an idiot. How long did you keep the story alive that you were injured and not that you deliberately fell? For a long time. A long, long time. What was waiting for her at that finish line in Sydney, should she cross first. The TV shows, the the parade, the commercials. The cereal box covers. Yes. Oh, Wheaties, you name it. It was all there for her, and she cannot get there. For every athlete who wins an Olympic medal, there's an athlete that's put on the discard pile who we never hear from again. Susie returns to Wisconsin. Beaten and ashamed, she is a runner turned recluse. Did you feel humiliated yes i was so embarrassed i didn't want anybody to see me i had a hat on i couldn't even go to my grocery store for gosh it took me weeks before i could leave the house 
Susie begins to slide into depression, and as years go by, husband and wife try to embrace a lower profile in America's heartland. It is a daily struggle. Susie, the one-time cover girl, is now reduced to a single image on the couple's website for their local real estate business. It is a job she dreads, and the stress from it strains the marriage. Although there is joy in the family when Susie gets pregnant and gives birth to daughter Kylie. So I was just so thrilled to be a mother. Besides getting married, this was the best moment of my life. But even motherhood is not enough to keep Susie from sliding into a deep, dark place. It got unhealthy pretty quickly, where she had to hold Kylie all the time. She couldn't let her go. She couldn't go out of the house. She'd become really irritable. What did it look like? Ugly. It was just anger. I saw anger for the first time in her, and I saw her withdrawn, and that's not her. Outside the home, Susie's trademark smile is evident at speaking engagements Good job. Good, and good appearances job. at local sports camps. But once again, it is all an act. Mark insists his wife get medical help, and after some trial and error with various antidepressants, Susie believes she's found one that works, Zoloft. It did not take long for Zoloft to make me feel really good. And not just good, really good. I'm talking amazingly good. What were you doing that was out of character? I was so outgoing, like over the top outgoing. But things continue to go downhill on the home front. When Mark and Susie aren't fighting, they simply aren't speaking. Had the two of you lost your spark, your attraction oh, yeah. for each other? Yeah, I was not very attracted to my wife, and I know she felt the same. So we needed a spark to, to the relationship. Susie suggests a trip to Las Vegas for the couple's 20th wedding anniversary. But she has something more in mind than slot machines in the Celine Dion show. First, a day of skydiving. I had no desire to jump out of an airplane. But the new and improved Susie is surprisingly game. The moment I fell out of that airplane, I felt like, this is my element. Number two on Susie's list is less exotic and more erotic. A threesome with a female escort. So we decided, well, why don't we try a threesome? A threesome? Yeah, it was something we had talked about. Uh, forgive me, but that's not on most people's bucket list. It was more me than him. Caught me off guard. Was any part of you shocked? Absolutely. Absolutely. Two things I, I never thought we would do, you know, quite frankly. At this point, Mark is willing to try anything to fix the marriage and agrees to the night of taboo. So you're in the hotel room, and there's a knock on the door. Yeah. What's going through your mind? I'm scared to death. Really? Yeah, just nervous as all get up. She comes in, you know, looks like the girl next door. And it was a fun, great experience. You had only in your whole life sexually been with your husband. Absolutely. What was it like to have this other woman and this hour in bed with the three of you? I kind of felt like, why isn't everybody else doing this? Why isn't everybody living life to the fullest? The couple pays a hefty sum to live one night to the fullest and eventually returns to Wisconsin. Mark thinks it was just a one-time experience and is happy to return home. But Susie is hooked. She's glimpsed a whole new world of sex, money, and freedom. And for her, the risky business is just beginning. That one sexual experience launched you to another stratosphere. Right. Why shouldn't I get paid for sex? This would be fun. Stay with us. Twenty twenty continues with Fast Girl. Once again, Elizabeth Vargas. After celebrating her anniversary with the Menage a Trois in a Las Vegas hotel, Susie Favor Hamilton returns home to Wisconsin but her heart is still back in Nevada. After that first trip to Vegas, something changed, something clicked, right? I came back and it was such an extreme, so slow, going back to my ordinary life. Within months, the need to feel that euphoric high is too much. She announces to Mark she must return, this time alone. I, I'm not gonna lie, uh, she had to sell it. 
she's gonna do what she's gonna do to an extent. I don't think I had a heck of a lot of say, but at least she's not cheating on me. And Susie doesn't just want to replay that first experience. She wants to dial up the heat. So you arranged to see a male escort? Yes. It ended up being the most fabulous experience. I had never had sex with another man besides my husband. I remember telling him, you're the second guy I've ever had sex with. And he said, oh my gosh, what a waste. You need to do this more. And um, I was hooked. I was hooked. Vegas, now her drug of choice, the only antidote that will quiet the crushing depression. Susie can't go without a regular visit there. At some point, you pick up a man in a bar and have sex yeah. and realize, I don't have to pay for sex. Right. How do you then make the jump to, I will get paid for sex? That was that light bulb moment in my head. Wow, well, why shouldn't I get paid for sex? This guy does, the escort, this would be fun. Did you run this by Mark? I had talked to him and all he thinks is she wants to just sample this. She'll do it once, she'll be done. She would try to calm my fears. Mark, this is safe. Mark, you have no idea. I've had this completely under control. These are wealthy, well-to-do, well-known people. Nothing's going to happen. Mark, I don't know how anybody can understand how you didn't get up and say, I'm leaving you. This is crazy. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder that too, to be perfectly honest. It's what I did though. I tuned out, you live your life, I live my life. And so it comes to pass that wife, mother, and three-time Olympian Susie Favor Hamilton picks up a phone and dials Jamie Rodman, the owner of a successful escort website. She had called me and said she wanted to try escorting. And I knew she had a husband. She kept insisting, no, no, he's fine, he's fine with it. So very quickly, you begin working under the pseudonym of Kelly Lundy. Yeah. Kelly Lundy advertises her services on Jamie's website with these alluring photos. Her price, $600 an hour. This is what you wrote on your web page. I try my best to bring elegance and class to the table and will dress appropriately for any occasion. I enjoy men of all shapes, sizes, and colors and I have an affinity for women as well. I am bisexual. Right. The clients respond instantly, and Mark is there in Vegas the first time his wife heads off to her new job. On her very first gig, working as a paid escort, mm -hmm. you're there watching her get dressed and get ready. Correct, yeah. I know what she's doing, it bothers me. I've raised my objections, she's gonna do it anyway. One of the most arresting aspects of this double life story is that two lives are playing out almost simultaneously. After her first sexual rendezvous, escort Kelly Lundy slips out of her dress, quickly changes into a running gear, and sprints across the strip to appear as Susie Favor Hamilton, the track star, at a local fundraiser, the rock and roll stiletto dash. Susie sails through the finish line in her rhinestone studded bra from her escorting appointment. And on it went. Susie in sneakers at celebrity appearances in the morning, Kelly in stilettos at night. One day, I had run a half marathon in the morning mm -hmm. in a different state, hopped on an airplane, got to Vegas, had five appointments. When you say five appointments, you mean five? Five different clients I saw You that slept day. with five different men. That day. Still after the five appointments, endless energy, couldn't sleep. The extremes became routine. Appointments scheduled through texts with little information other than a room number and a time. We brought Susie to Las Vegas where she showed us her secret world. First thing you would do is come into the, the bathroom? Yes, and okay. right over here would be the envelope with $100. Uh, Just with the by hundreds. the sink. Yep, I would open the envelope and thumb through the hundreds and it was like this magical, powerful force. It just kind of propelled me. The hypersexuality is what led you to not only get dressed up, knock on these men's doors, go into a, a room by yourself with them, right. but then to almost immediately disrobe, take right. off your dress. Absolutely. And be the aggressor. Right. Sexually. Right. Susie's book describes the encounters in unflinching detail. Susie, I have to say, as I read your book, I feel scared for you. I feel worried for your safety. Absolutely. The danger. I mean, I could have easily been killed. Easily. 
Susie would never have gone in that room, never in a million years. But when you become a different person, this other person wanted that risk. Why do you talk about your behavior then, like you're talking about a different person and a third person? Because Kelly was a different person. But beneath all Kelly's glitz, the competitive spirit of the little girl from Stevens Point still burns when she learns there's a website called the Erotic Review where most popular escorts are ranked, she fixates on becoming number one. I became obsessed with that ranking. How do I get to the top? She truly was enthusiastic about what she was doing. It, for her, it was more a passion. It wasn't a job. She wasn't doing it for money. To win the medal in this arena, she has to look the part. So the transformation progresses. The hair gets blonder, the dresses shorter, the lashes longer. It's like, here I am in all my glory. I am now Kelly and ready to hit the scene. Meanwhile, back in Wisconsin, Mark is thrust into becoming a single parent, despite desperately trying to protect his daughter from her mother's scandalous double life. She was impossible to deal with. And after a while, when it got to a certain point, after months of this, I was like, go. Get out of the house. Let Kylie and I have our normal life. Are you surprised he didn't leave you? Yeah, extremely, at many times. But what he's told me is he kept remembering who I used to be, the wife that I was, the mom. I stand up. I can jump like this. The fantasy plays out for months. Lost in her alternate universe of hedonism and decadence, Kelly's grip on reality begins slipping. She gets careless, forgetting personal items in clients' rooms, and breaking the cardinal rule of escorting, telling a few customers her real name. Were you worried someone was going to recognize you and figure out that you were Susie Faber Hamilton? I was completely delusional. I'm saying, you're crazy. I'm saying, it's your funeral. Do you understand the risk? I'm saying all this stuff. Mark's warnings fall on deaf ears. In her mind, Kelly is invincible. I wanted my independence. Since I'd been an athlete, I was so coachable. Everybody always told me what to do. Everything had been planned your entire my day, entire your life. entire life. I was free now. Whatever it took, whatever risk, I was going to do it. But any gambler will tell you luck can't last forever. And now, in an instant, reality is about to crash through the door. I have wanted to just die at that moment because I knew my life was probably over. Stay with us. It is a warm December Friday in Las Vegas. Susie Favor Hamilton is spending Thanksgiving break here with her daughter Kylie and her husband Mark. And the worst day of her life begins with a public appearance at a local casino. I was working for the Rock and Roll Marathon and I was doing an appearance on stage, kind of motivating the crowd and getting them psyched up for the race. <laughs> But something's not right. While her daughter Kylie is on stage, Susie jumps up and begins a frenzied, disturbing dance, which attracts the wrong kind of attention. I was dancing and yelling and just being crazy. And people were walking by, staring at me, going, wow, there's something wrong with that woman. It absolutely flabbergasted me what I saw. It was like, what on earth? Were you embarrassed? I was embarrassed, and I took Kylie out of there. The wheels were coming off the, the cart. The wheels were coming off, yes. Susie is oblivious, and as soon as the event is over, she reads a text message from a client confirming an appointment later that day. Kelly Lundy, the high-priced escort, and Susie's alter ego is now ranked number two on the erotic review. But before she can resume her fantasy life, reality intrudes. I'm waiting for the elevator, and I hear this man go, hey, Susie, and I'm like, oh, it's just another runner, and maybe they want an autograph. But then I turned to look at him, and he didn't look like a runner. No, in fact, he looks exactly like who he is. Investigative journalist William Bastone, co-founder of thesmokinggun.com, and he's got the goods. According to Susie, Bastone tells her he's spoken to several of her clients. He's also matched the dates of Kelly's availabilities with Susie's public appearances and read the glowing reviews from Kelly's satisfied customers. I just, I about wanted to just 
die at that moment because I knew, I knew my life was probably over. Finally, the moment her husband had warned her would happen, a warning she heard repeatedly and methodically ignored. I've been saying for Someone's months, gonna this will put, happen. Put it all I together. even said, somebody's gonna show up at one of these events. What did you say to Kylie at that point? I told her, there's something wrong with your mom. That's not your mom. You know that's not your mom. She's a good person. We're gonna figure this out eventually. Did it scare her? A little bit. Yeah, I had done a really good job. Ugh, sorry. You did a good job protecting, protecting Susie. her. Protecting Kylie from seeing that. But I, she saw that. And she knew. She knew something was wrong. Two weeks later, the story hits with the force of a freight train. Susie Favor Hamilton. Susie Favor Hamilton. She's been leading a double life. A TW Madison track athlete. Susie Favor Hamilton. Susie Favor Hamilton was working as a high-priced Las Vegas escort. One of the strangest stories that we have seen. This is unbelievable that my life went from the all-American girl to the whore overnight like that. I saw a, a headline online and I clicked on it and I just could not believe what I was reading. In Wisconsin, her father's advice, leave the country, change your name. I honestly felt at that time I, we weren't going to be together much longer. That you were going to be divorced? We were going to be divorced. It was just a matter of time. As bad as things were, the worst was still to come. There was so much hate mail pouring in. The first day, Mark got 600 emails. And what were people saying? Your wife's a slut, your wife's a whore, you need to leave her. It said, you need to kill yourself like your brother did. Worried that Susie might in fact do just that, Mark calls the family doctor. She got help within the next few days, talked to a psychiatrist. Finally, the question of how all this happened is answered. An impending move into mania or depression. Susie is diagnosed with bipolar disorder, the same mental illness that afflicted her brother characterized by a period of extreme manic euphoria, followed by crushing depression. In this case, Susie from Wisconsin was the depressed persona. Kelly from Las Vegas was the manic. All Suddenly the pieces start falling into place They start make, for you. making more sense. Were you surprised to find out that you were bipolar? Completely shocked. Why? I, Your brother had suffered from it. I wasn't educated on this illness. It wasn't talked about in our family. And one other key insight. One of Susie's doctors, Claudia Reardon, explained that although antidepressants can help some people with bipolar, in Susie's case, it compounded the symptoms. You give them an antidepressant and it lifts their mood, but they don't have as much of a ceiling on their mood, and so it can push their mood too high. We often see symptoms such as hypersexuality, spending lots of money, engaging in lots of reckless kinds of behaviors because people generally aren't in the state of mind to think through ahead to the consequences of those kinds of behaviors. I would never have become an escort if I wasn't on the drug that made me hypersexual. But I also know that I was having sex for money so I'm not pinning it on bipolar and looking at that as the excuse. It has taken years of therapy, medication, and determination for Susie to control her mental illness and confront the horror of her past. I take full responsibility for what I did. Just getting through our shoot in Las Vegas, a place she calls one of her primary triggers, is an accomplishment in itself. So Kelly doesn't exist anymore. She's gone. She can't come back. And yet the ghost of Kelly Lundy still lingers. Susie hasn't thrown out her Vegas outfits. So, Vegas bag. This is where I have all my Kelly things. This bag is $2,000? $2,000. As a gift? It's a gift, yeah. Wow. This is um, a dress? How high did this come girls. on you? This came, let's see. Very short. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting that I kept the stuff. It reminds me of this Kelly and the sex and all the crazy things she did. And... <laughs> then... 
that is <laughs> to get <laughs> to get to a point where you don't feel shame. It's a lot of work. Clearly, though, you still have... I have lots of pain from it. Lots of pain, and that's normal. I'll always have pain from it. But I know it wasn't Susie. I keep trying to emphasize that wasn't me. It was the disease and how many other people are going through this and they can't reach out because our society shames them. Does some yeah. part of you inside still feel that shame? I don't feel one ounce of shame. I do not feel shame. I refuse to let the act ruin me. Then why are you crying? Because I'm upset for the people that I hurt. I hurt so many people. Can Susie set things right? when we come back. Twenty twenty continues with Fast Girl. Today Susie Favor Hamilton is trying to pack up her past and move on. You have you the family has moved from Wisconsin, the site of so much glory but too much baggage, and moved to California. You did all this training for so But not years. before one last visit to the University of Wisconsin track for a walk down these memory lanes. I can actually see myself running and that same feeling. I can actually put myself in that day. You know, I look back and I wish, I just wish I, I could have enjoyed it more. You know, that's, that's so sad. It is sad, but I guess the gift is I am where I am today and a different frame of mind, a happy frame of mind. That frame of mind guided her to write a New York Times bestseller about her life. I'm talking to you now with strength and confidence and um, now setting an example for people to follow that I truly believe is more important than a gold medal. And that example is the strength to persevere, the strength to overcome destruction put your life back together to pick yourself up and dust yourself off right and if, if I can do this just think of all the other people who can change their life too and Susie did a lot of amazing things on the track this might be the greatest thing she has done telling the, her story telling her story she is absolutely 